During the pre-trip inspection, you must show that the vehicle is safe to drive. We're going to go over internal inspections and external inspections. Oil level indicate where the dipstick is located and see that oil level is within safe operating range. The oil level must be above the refill mark. Coolant level. Inspect the reservoir side glass if equipped with one. If it's a clear coolant reservoir like this one, check for the full mark. If uh, the coolant is not visible and the engine's not hot, remove the radiator cap and check for visible coolant level. Power steering fluid, same as the coolant fluid. You should indicate where the power steering fluid dipstick is. Uh, if the reservoir has a side glass, you should be able to locate the side glass. Um, you gotta check for power steering fluid level. And the level must be above uh, the refill mark. Engine compartment belts. When checking the belt, you're checking for snugness should be around half to uh, three quarter inch play at the center of the belt. Uh, the uh, conditions that you're actually checking for, you're checking for cracks, frays, uh, any loose fibers or other, you know, like signs of wear. You gotta check for uh, power steering belt if it does have one. Uh, water pump belt, alternator belt, but mainly serpentine belts, one that runs alternator, air conditioning, compressor, water pump, and the second belt runs the, the fan. Alternator, check that uh, the alternator is mounted securely with no loose or, or uh, missing bolts. Check for loose electrical connections or exposed, burnt, or uh, broken wires. Power steering pump. Check that the pump is securely mounted with no loose or uh, missing bolts. Usually power steering pumps like this, they only have two bolts, one on top and one at the bottom. Uh, you're checking for Fluid leaks, uh, cut or cracked or fried uh, hoses. Air compressor. Check that the air compressor is mounted securely with no loose or uh, missing bolts. Basically, pay attention on any mounting gasket or uh, head gasket seals for the coolant. Water pump. Check that the water pump's not leaking. Steering box and hoses. Basically, check that the steering box is securely mounted to the frame. Look for any loose or missing bolts. And then you pretty much have to check for uh, power steering fluid leakage, uh, any damaged hoses or cracked. Steering linkage. Pretty much you gotta look at the connecting link, arm, rod, from the steering box all the way to the uh, wheel and you're looking for worn, cracked, or bent parts. Uh, check the joints and sockets that are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or, uh, or uh, cutter pins. Lift springs. Look for missing, shifted, cracked, or broken lift springs. Look for broken or distorted coil springs. If the uh, vehicle is equipped with torsion bars, torque arms, radius rods, or other type of uh, suspension components, check that they're not loose or they have uh, missing bolts. Also check the condition of the arm or bushing to ensure that it's not cracked or broken. When equipped with air ride suspension, the air ride suspension should be checked to ensure the airbags are inflated and have no cuts, bulges, or any type of audible leaks. Mounts should be checked at each point where they are attached or secured to the frame. 
shock absorbers. You gotta make sure there's no cracks on the brackets, on the shock itself. There's no missing bolts, worn out bushings. And mainly, you gotta make sure there's no leakage around the shock itself. Doors and mirrors. Check that doors are not damaged and they open and close properly from the outside. Hinges should be secured with seals intact. Check mirrors and mirror brackets for any type of damage and make sure they are properly secured. During our fuel system inspection, we're gonna be checking for fuel leaks. Not to be confused with any other fuel tanks, such as this one. The uh, operator overfilled the uh, tank and right now it gives the impression that it's leaking because the whole tank is wet. It has some uh, fuel residue. We gotta keep an eye on that. We're checking for fuel lines, fittings. Check the tanks are secure by inspecting nuts and bolts of the mounting brackets or looking for shiny areas near the mounting straps. That would indicate shifting. Check that fuel caps are tight and there are no leaks from the tank or lines. Gotta make sure that the vents are open and not clogged. Battery box, whatever located. See that batteries are secure and connections are tight and cell caps are present. Um, right now, what I can see, these uh, batteries are maintenance free, so we're not gonna see any type of uh, caps. But um, so far, what I can see, this um, battery here, it's not properly secure. We can actually see the uh, tie downs right outside uh, the box, and this battery is not even in, in there all the way. So if, uh, whenever you find something like this, you gotta make a note, schedule a repair. Also, if, uh, battery terminals, you gotta make sure they're not showing excessive corrosion and they're all nice and tight. Finally, battery box cover, you gotta make sure that it's nice and secured. Drive shaft, see that it's lubricated and it's not bent and cracked. Make sure that the drive shaft is properly mounted and secured and literally try to shake it if possible. Check nuts, bolts, caps, carry bearing. Make sure there is no foreign debris in between the joint. Exhaust system. You have to check the system for damage such as uh, cracks, holes, or any other severe dent. But mainly for any type of leakage such as rust or, you know, like carbon suit around the, the joints. The uh, system must be uh, connected tightly and mounted securely with no loose or missing nuts or bolts. Frames, you're looking for cracks broken wheels or bends along the frame members you're looking for damaged cross members loose or missing bolts sometimes the frame especially new frames they have rivets you're looking for missing rivets Splash guards. Quarter fenders. Mud flaps. Check that mud flaps are not torn or damaged. And they're mounted securely. And there are no more than 10 inches from the ground. When checking for accessories such as in this case, we have 
tire chains, you may have straps, binders, they must be secured. Uh, in this case, we have a chain holder. We gotta make sure that the hinges are not damaged and the uh, door is uh, working properly. And of course, that everything is nice and secured. Catwalk, check that the catwalk is solid and clear from all objects and it's securely bolted to the tractor frame not like this one slack adjusters and push rods you're looking for broken, loose or missing parts when checking for a brake adjustment don't forget to chuck the wheels before you release the brakes the push rod shouldn't move more than one inch or exceed the maximum stroke when pulled by hand. When the parking brake is set, the push rod and the adjuster arm shouldn't be less than 90 degrees. If the angle between the push rod and the adjusting arm is less than 90 degrees, that's an indication that the brakes are out of adjustment. Brake chambers. Check that the chamber is mounted securely to the mounting bracket and that there are no loose or missing bolts. Also check the chambers for cracks or dents. Brake hoses and lines. You're looking for cracked, worn, leaking hoses, lines, and couplings. And make sure they are connected securely. Brake drums, rotors, and lining pads. Check the drum or rotors for excessive wear or cracks on some brakes there are openings where the brake lining or pads are visible verify that the lining or pads are not cracked or broken and are at least a quarter of an inch of thickness also, brake drums, rotors, brakes, brake linings, pads should be free of oil and grease at all times. Rims. Check for cracks or welds. Rims cannot have any type of welding repairs. Check for dents, especially around the bead flinch. And make sure there's no uh, disruption around the bullet holes. Tires. The following items must be inspected on every single tire. Thread depth. Check for a minimum thread depth of 4 30 seconds on all the drive axles and 2 30 seconds on the steer axles. Sidewall condition. Check for cats, bulges, abrasions, or any type of damage on the wall of the tire. Also, make sure that the valve cap stems are not missing or damaged. Tire inflation. Check for proper inflation by using a tire gauge. A visual inspection, it's not acceptable for dual tires. Hub oil seals and axle seals. See that hub, gaskets, and seals are not leaking. And if the hub has a side glass, make sure that the oil level is adequate. Lug nuts. Check that all lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, and show no signs of looseness, such as raw trails, 
shiny threads. Ball hole distortion or cracks around the ball holes. Spacers or bad spacing. Spacer should be evenly centered with the dual wheels and tires evenly separated. Check that the dual tires are not touching and that no debris is lodged between them. Fifth wheel platform. Check for cracks or breaks in the platform structure just above the upper mounting bolts that support the fifth wheel skid plate. Check for loose bolts, missing pins or cutter pins. Released arm for the uh, fifth wheel. You have to make sure that the uh, released arm is in the engaged uh, position at all times. And uh, you can actually look on the jaws right now, they're open. Locking jaws for the fifth wheel. This applies when you have a trailer already hooked up to it. What you're doing is you're looking in the fifth wheel gap and you gotta make sure that the locking jaws are fully enclosed around the kingpin. And right now the, the jaws are on the uh, engaged uh, position. Apron. When checking the apron, you gotta make sure that the visible part of the apron, or actually the plate that is attached to the underside of the trailer, the rest on the skid plate, which is this one, you gotta make sure that it's not bent or cracked or in some cases broken when uh, the trailer is attached to the fifth wheel check that the trailer is laying flat on the fifth wheel skid plate and there is no gap sliding fifth wheel locking pins right there this particular fifth wheel the locking pins they're visible from the inside some model fifth wheels are stationary which means that they don't slide back or forward. But if equipped with the sliding fifth wheel, you're looking for loose or missing pins in the slide mechanism of the uh, fifth wheel itself. And if they're air powered, check for any leaks. Mainly make sure that the locking pins are fully engaged. Check that the fifth wheel is positioned properly. So the tractor frame will clear the landing gear during turns. If the fifth wheel is positioned forward too far, depending on the model of the trailer, the landing gear could take the mud flap and the frame itself can take the landing gear when turning. Fifth wheel skid plate. Check for proper lubrication and that the fifth wheel skid plate is securely mounted to the platform and that all the bolts and pins are secured and not missing. Quick reminder, when you're inspecting the fifth wheel plate and there's no lubrication, it's possible that the trailer is equipped with a Teflon plate. And if it does, the fifth wheel doesn't require to have any type of grease. Pintle hook. Check that there are no cracks, breaks in the pintle hook structure itself. And also there is no excessive wear on the pintle hook itself. Safety latch or locking device. Make sure that the safety latch or locking device is engaged. Safety chains and cables. When pulling the trailer, check that the chains or cables are attached, hooked, or otherwise uh, connected to any towing unit. Clutch gear shift. Depress the clutch if the vehicle is equipped with the manual transmission. Place the shift gear 
in neutral, start the engine and then release the clutch slowly. Air gauge or air gauges. Make sure that the gauges are working properly and that the air pressure builds while the engine's running. Oil pressure gauge. Make sure oil pressure gauge is working. Check that the oil pressure is increasing or it's a normal pressure. Or that the uh, warning light goes off. Amp meter or volt meter. Check that the gauge is showing charging or the warning light goes off. Anti-lock brake system. Check that the warning light comes on on the startup and then turns off. Temperature gauge. Make sure that the temperature gauge is working. The uh, temperature should begin to climb to normal operating range or the temperature light should be off. Lighting indicators. Left and right turn signal indicator operates when the corresponding signal is activated. Four-way emergency flasher indicator operates when the flasher is turned on. High beam headlight indicator operates when the headlight switch to high beam. Mirrors and windshield. The mirror should be clean, no cracked, broken or loose. Then adjust it properly from the inside. The windshield should be cleaned with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, and no cracks. Emergency equipment. Check for spare electrical fuses. Check for three red reflected triangles, fuses or three liquid burning flares. Also check for a properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. Wipers and washers. Check that the wiper arm and blade are secured, not damaged. and they also operate it smoothly and if equipped with windshield washer and the windshield washer must operate correctly horn check that the air horn and city horn works Heater and defroster. Test of the heater and the defroster works. If equipped with hydraulic brakes, pump the brake pedal three times and hold it down for five seconds. The brake pedal shouldn't move for five seconds. Also check that the warning buzzer and light goes off. Air brake check. You have to use wheel chuck while performing an air brake check. With the engine on, we're gonna do our first leak test. We're gonna build our air pressure to govern cut out to 125 PSI. Now we're going to release our parking brake. Now 
we're going to fan the air pressure down by rapidly applying and releasing the brake pedal to 90 foot pounds. Until the air compressor starts operating. Now we're going to apply 50 pounds of pressure and hold it for one minute. If there's any decrease in pressure after the initial pressure drop, it is considered an equi equipment failure. With this test, the pressure should remain steady or increasing like it is right now. Step two, lower warning. With the engine running, this test will determine if the lower warning system activates early enough to allow the driver to stop the vehicle safely. We're gonna start by fanning off the air pressure rapidly, applying and releasing the foot brake. The uh, low air warning device, buzzer, light or flag should activate before air pressure drops 60 foot pounds. Right now it's about 60 foot pounds and we got a buzzer and a light. If the low air warning device doesn't activate before 55 PSI, it's considered an equipment failure. Step three, tractor protection valve. This test will determine if the uh, tractor protection valve functions properly by stopping airflow to the trailer so that the tractor service brakes will remain operable. With the engine running, we're going to release the brakes, tractor and trailer brakes. We're going to fan down the brake air pressure and by the time the air pressure gauge reaches 20 psi, the uh, tractor protection control valve and the trailer supply valve and parking brake valve should close and they should pop out and if the knob on the dash fails to pop out at 20 psi we have to check the tractor protection valve let's do it let's pay attention on the gauge and the valve at the same time It popped out and we can see our gauges rising. Now how do we check our tractor protection valve? Well it's really easy. First we're gonna fan our brake pressure all the way to 60 psi. And this is done with the engine off, not running. We're gonna leave it like that. The uh, tractor protection valve is usually seen underneath the cab, right behind the sleeper, or up against the frame. What are we gonna do is we're gonna unplug the glide hand, the emergency glide hand. This is the one that supplies air to the trailer. We're gonna leave it disconnected and then we're gonna release the trailer brakes. We're gonna look at our gauge and by the time the air gauge drops all the way to 20 PSI, that trailer valve should pop out. If it doesn't pop out, that tractor protection valve is gonna fail. Okay, now with our engine off and our gauge is about 60 PSI, 
We're gonna start by releasing the tractor brakes. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the trailer valve. But the only difference is that we have our glad hand disconnected on the back of the truck. So we're gonna be listening to air escaping and looking at our gauge too. That valve should pop out when it reaches 20 PSI and the air should stop coming out. Let's see it. Let's look at the gauge and the valve at the same time. The air is escaping. It actually popped out before 20 PSI. So that's good. The extractor protection valve didn't fail. Engine off, air brake check. Step one, leak test. This test will determine if there's any leaks that can cause the air brakes to drag or locked up. First, we're gonna build our air pressure to govern cut out 125 PSI. Now we're gonna release our parking brakes. Make sure that the wheels are chucked. Keep an eye on an air gauge. Then we're gonna apply 50 pounds of air pressure. This is done with the engine not running. We're gonna hold that for one minute. And we're gonna keep an eye on our needles. If we lose three to four pounds in one minute, the equipment is considered a failure. Step two, low air warning. With this test, we'll determine if the air warning system activates early enough to allow the driver to stop the vehicle safely. We're gonna begin by fanning off the air pressure by applying and releasing the brake pedal. The low warning device should activate before air pressure drops below 60 PSI. If the low warning device doesn't activate before 55 PSI, it will be considered an equipment failure. So let's pump the air brake. There is our warning light. Around 60 PSI. The test is good. Step three, with the engine off, not running, we're gonna check the tractor protection valve. Pretty much we're gonna follow the same steps that we did when we checked the uh, tractor protection valve when the engine was running. We're gonna disconnect our trailer glad hand, red glad hand that supplies air to the trailer. Then we're gonna release our tractor brakes. At the same time, we're gonna release our trailer brakes. We're gonna hear the air escaping. And before our needle reaches 20 pounds of pressure, our knob trailer should pop out. There it is. It looked like it's it's about 30 PSI. If the valve doesn't pop out, it is considered an equipment failure. Parking brake check. During this test, we're gonna apply the parking brake only. We're gonna shift the vehicle into a lower gear and gently we're gonna pull forward. And the parking brake should hold the vehicle. Service brake check. 
This procedure is designed to determine if the brakes are working correctly and then the vehicle doesn't pull to one side or the other. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull four, five miles per hour and then we're going to apply the service brake and stop. And what we're looking at is that the vehicle doesn't pull to either side of the truck. Safety belt. Check that the safety belt is safely mounted. Adjust and latches properly. And check that the belt's not ripped or badly fried.